question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the Honourable Paul Goldsmith. Uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, Madam Speaker, and uh, my pleasure to speak on this uh, bill, uh, which uh, the Taxation Neutralising Base Erosion and Profit Shifting Bill, uh, which is uh, one that was introduced by the previous uh, national government uh, under the leadership, uh, or under the tax leadership, or the leadership uh, of the uh, revenue uh, portfolio of uh, Judith Collins and has been carried on uh, in the, the uh, new dispensation that we find ourselves in uh, by the Labour government. And, uh, you know, broadly speaking, uh, we um, remain supportive of the, this, the thrust of this bill, which fundamentally is, is trying to uh, deal with um, uh, that tension that we face uh, and all countries face in a globalised world of wanting to ensure that uh, international businesses pay their fair share of tax, uh, and so if you're a, a, a multinational country, a, a, a company uh, based in New Zealand, um, you know, selling, uh, for example, pharmaceuticals or something like that, and uh, you, you are making profits in this country, and um, we want to ensure that that, that that profitability is accurately described and tax is paid for it. Uh, and uh, since, uh, as long as companies have been trading across borders, there have been ways and means and efforts uh, to reduce uh, the amount of tax paid in countries where tax rates are relatively high and shifted to ta places where tax rates are low in order to avoid pay paying tax. And, and naturally, uh, we, like every country in the world, has tried to resist that urge. And as a small uh, economy such as New Zealand, we've always been conscious of the fact uh, that it's not something that we can fix on our own uh, and uh, um, uh, that we're far better to work with uh, and through multinational organisations uh, to, to achieve this. And so the OECD, uh, of which New Zealand is a member based in Paris, has been working in this tax area for a long time and as the Minister has acknowledged, New Zealand uh, has had a long and proud tradition of uh, having a, 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 a very constructive role in those discussions. And so uh, this bill flows out of some, the, the recommendations uh, of the, uh, the OECD working groups uh, in order to try and to defeat that. Now, the tension also arises, though, between uh, while we're wanting to ensure that international businesses pay their fair share of tax, we also want to... Uh, we also want to have multinational countries investing in New Zealand and trading in New Zealand in New Zealand, so New Zealand has access to uh, the goods that they, uh, goods and services they provide, uh, and and that we can enjoy the many many benefits of having uh, uh, multinational country uh, companies actively engaged in this country, not just in terms of of, of doing business, but also um, uh, from the management experience uh, and the, you know the many many benefits that you get from having. Uh, 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 um, branches of, of multinational organisations based in this country and investing in this country. And so uh, uh, we want to ensure that the tax rules that are developed uh, are not unduly hostile to that happening. Uh, and we are acknowledge that we, if you live in a world where uh, people are m making decisions in Singapore or uh, Shanghai or New York or London about where to invest uh, as a company, and where to trade as a company, uh, it's not automatic that New Zealand has to be at the top of the queue, uh, um, and that we, are, we have to be uh, attractive. And so the, the uh, after-tax returns are uh, obviously what companies look at, look at, and so a certain measure of, A, predictability about the tax that they're likely to pay, and, uh, um, and the, the, the effective rate of that tax uh, according to the rules that uh, apply is very important, and so uh, what we've tried to achieve uh, here in this in this legislation is to try and sort of weave uh, uh, get, get an effective line between those things. You know, wanting to ensure that a uh, proper amount of tax is paid, uh, that the system is robust, uh, and at the same time uh, not being um, arbitrary or unpredictable uh, and excessive in um, excessively tight in the way that we uh, uh, gather that tax, and. Um, as we've seen over the very lengthy and detailed debate that we had in the, in the committee stage, uh, there, are, you know, there are lots of sort of fine arguments to be had around the particulars. Uh, 
and you know, and, 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 you know the, the basic sort of measures of this bill are around uh, stopping uh, foreign parents charging their New Zealand subsidiaries uh, high rates of interest to reduce their taxable profits in New Zealand. And, and, and you know, the basic sort of dynamic there is uh, that if you, uh, if a, if a multinational country company uh, bases a, a parent company in, in um, a, a, a subsidiary in New Zealand, loads it up with debt and then charges a high rate of interest for that debt, then the New Zealand company trading in New Zealand will, pay a very, will, will, will post a very small profit, even though it might actually be very profitable on its trading, uh, and therefore pay very little tax in New Zealand, and the tax is paid instead on the, uh, where the interest is, is gathered, and if that's in a low tax uh, regime, then, then overall they pay less tax, but the New Zealanders uh, receive le uh, less out of it. And so uh, I suppose the broader point I'd make in, in all of this, and I won't uh, um, go too deep into the details of this bill, is to contrast, I suppose, the process that we've had in the construction of this legislation. And it, and it may not prove to be perfect, and no tax legislation uh, ever is, and I, I won't be at all surprised if we come back uh, in, the, in the not too distant future uh, re um, examining some of these uh, decisions that we've made and, and asking if we got the balance right. Uh, but we'll come back, uh, but, we'll, but at least we've had a process where we've spent a considerable amount of time uh, working out what we've tried to achieve. There's been detailed advice coming from officials uh, about uh, what we're trying to achieve. Then there's been a large and considered select committee process. Uh, and changes have been made as a result of that select, select committee process, which has uh, uh, had the feedback of the many hundreds of practitioners in this, in, in this space in New Zealand and internationally, and we've adjusted the legislation to get the best result that we can. A and unfortunately, that is um, proving to be not always the case in the way this government goes about its business. And the most striking contrast, of course, is with the oil and gas decision that was made in the absence of any... Uh, um, uh, detailed analysis by officials, uh, by uh, arbitrary ministerial fiat, and not actually going through cabinet, uh, let alone um, uh, you know, the, the legislative processes that may well be um, taken. And, and, and then we're seeing in, in many other parts of the business community, if we're looking at industrial, legisl industrial changes legislation, for example, uh, a determination on the government to do uh, very significant things. Uh, but an unwillingness to listen to the businesses that are most affected by that uh, when they raise realistic concerns about the costs that are being imposed on business. And I just wish uh, that, that we translated the tax development process that has been a, a relatively bipartisan one over many, many years in this, in this government and a well-known and proven track record uh, of developing uh, legislation and actually getting meaningful engagement uh, with uh, practitioners, practitioners in the field. I just wish that we applied a similar level, civil, similar level of uh, rigour and analysis in, in research and a genuine listening and engaging with stakeholders uh, most directly affected and a, an attempt at some bipartisanship uh, over the, po the political debates. Uh, if we applied that in, in, in the fields of industrial relations uh, or in uh, economic development or, uh, or the uh, foreign investment rules, for example, or the many other areas where this government is going out, making very substantial changes uh, in, a, in a seemingly arbitrary sense uh, and not meaningfully in listening and engaging with the broader business community, I think we'd be in much better shape than we are at the moment. We wouldn't be seeing... Uh, what we are seeing right now is falling business confidence uh, right across the country. And uh, so uh, I, I suppose it's a bit of a, 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 um, a message of, of this, is, this, is, this is a pattern that the government would be well advised to follow uh, in the broader way that they go about their business, uh, and I only wish that they would. And so uh, I just encourage uh, the next speaker and, and the, uh, uh, the many government speakers that will follow to um, reflect and consider uh, the way that uh, tax legislation has been developed and, and apply that more broadly in the way that the government goes about its business. Thank you very much. Speaker. I call Kiri Tabu Allen. Yeah. Well, I must thank the... Um, the